Hi and welcome to another episode of the Getting Things Done podcast from GTD Nordic. I am Morten Røvik and I'm here as always uh, with my good friend and colleague uh, Lars Rotskill Hendriksen. Privet Lars. <laughs> Hello Mr. Røvik, happy to be back and looking forward to doing another episode with you. For those of you who have not listened to the podcast before, uh, we record these episodes to support you in learning GTD or becoming even better GTD so you can experience the benefits of GCD. And we really hope that you find this episode valuable, regardless of how experienced you are with GCD. And if you're new to GCD, we always recommend you go back and listen to the first six episodes. Uh, we talk about the five steps there, and that'll be a good refresher or introduction to getting things done. Mm -hmm. Today's episode is a listener questions episode, and we have two listener questions that we will answer today. And uh, Lars, will you read us the first question? Sure. So the first question is from Oliver, who wrote to us saying, I'm loving your podcast. It's been great for getting and keeping me going with GTD after falling off the wagon for a few years. So great to hear that. Thanks, Oliver. One thing I struggle with and maybe good for an episode is to talk about projects in GTD. What is a project? What does it look like? How to record them and tie up the next actions? Keep up the good work, Oliver. Hmm. What would you respond with? Ooh, that's a lengthy question, but um, <laughs> just to start with the basics here for those of you who are fresh to GTDs and then a refresher for those who have been doing this for a while, we have five steps of getting things done. The first is capture everything that has your attention that you might want to do something about or that you might have a worry about. And uh, then the second and the third is clarify what does it mean to you and organize it somewhere you will find it. And then clarify would then end up to be two different things in general. Just an overview is that, that this is a decide outcome slash project and a next action that will move that project or next, sorry, decide outcome forward. So, and we... I kind of gave away some of the, the keys here for the, the side outcome is very um, important uh, for you to define what does done look like. So for instance, if I have something that shows up on, on my radar that I do not uh, know exactly what I need to do, some things are very evident what I need to do, some, uh, you know, um, what I need to achieve, what my desired outcome is, but some, some are not. Um, so take time to to reflect on what is this and what does it mean to me. It's an important question. So what does it mean to me, um, this thing that is in front of me? And we might want to give some examples after, but just to give the overview first. And then when you understand what it is and what it means to you, you, you might want to ask, what do I want to be different about this when this is finished? And we will call that kind of that finishing line. How does that, how does that look? Um, how should the, the, the how should the future look different than now? And, um, and then the next action would be how what is the first visible physical next action that you can do in one setting that where you have everything you need. So anything you would like to add to that definition? Just the overview, Lars. Anything no, I think that, that that's a, that's a great starting point. I think you know um, just to to frame the project definition a bit more. Anything that that requires more than one action step to complete, exactly. and, and up you. to twelve months uh, time frame, mm. um, and and perhaps also refer you back to the first episodes, as I mentioned just before, yeah. uh, where we talk more in detail about clarify and organize, mm. and that would be steps uh, then uh, three and and four. Mm. Yeah, so but yeah, it can really yeah. be anything. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. So why we, I would suggest that what we do is that we just make up a couple of examples so we can, you know, answer the questions so that it's, you know, giving, um, um, you know, an overview. So I know that you have a summer house, Lars, and um, mm -hmm. this summer house, uh, let's pretend that it needs, a, and you are capturing a new paint summer house. So because you want to paint the summer house again. That might be something you're smiling, maybe you're... That is an project. active project indeed, yes. Okay, <laughs> I didn't know that, but uh, okay, so that makes it a good case. So, so uh, if you look at that, then that, what is it? What does it mean to you? You know, if you don't do this, what's, what's going to happen? Hmm, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah besides the the visual uh, side of things uh, mm. it also it's an old uh, wooden house so it mm. really needs to be painted to ensure that it lasts for uh, many years to come so it's it's uh, to just to to since we're now anyway picking up this project uh, it's a project that we have a you know it's a shared project with my wife and i we're both mm. working on this working to make it happen a lot of actions have been you know a part of this um, planning when we should do it buying all the paint all that all that kind of stuff um, and uh, now, yeah, we're we're hoping the the weather will be uh, okay on Sunday, and we'll uh, get that fresh uh, paint of uh, coat of paint on it for the for the first time. Hmm. So, so w w what is the project name? What's the name? How did you name your monster? I think it's named to just you know finalize painting the summer house, something like hmm. that. Hmm. Okay. And one of the things that I would like to add to this, I, I just listened to to a short podcast from the official. Um, getting things done podcast where David talks about naming your projects. Why is it important? And he mentioned, let's see if I can paraphrase this. He mentioned two different cultures around the world where um, if you name something, you get um, power over this thing you name. And, uh, and, and another, another culture around the world somewhere where people will not give you, give you their names because if they, you give them, if if you get their names you get a power over them hmm. so and and this might be you know translated into that actually if you name something you can get a power over it and i i have a coaching client um who has worries you know the, about the future about projects that's complicated that um this person don't know exactly how to handle and we talk we talk about this and naming your monsters Hmm. And uh, if you have a monster in your world, you know, either something you procrastinate that you don't know, you know, you are pushing in front of you or you have a scare about the, the naming it, you know, defining it, telling you exactly what is this and what does it mean to me? What do I need to do about this? How should the future be changed? What would be different when this, this is finished? What's my finishing line? If you use those questions helping you, then to define it, it will be better. You will be better off. Hmm. Do you have any comments on this? Way of no, thinking? that certainly makes sense. Um, and and I think to to add to that, um, you know, Oliver's um, question is really really broad. What is a project, and hmm. and what does it look like? I think if we if we go to what does it look like, it can take some some different forms. I think overall, when we start off with GTD, we would you know recommend having a a simple list of all of your projects. And this can mm. be just one flat list. I think for most people, when they start to build that list, there will be sort of a natural way to group things, uh, work projects and personal projects, perhaps. Um, mm. But but having that plain list of projects is just mm. so helpful and so valuable. Um, mm. I did a, deliver a seminar last uh, last week, and just to start to build this list, people can really see the value in this and starting to get mm. that overview that a project list uh, list provides. Mm. Um, and one of the things that we then don't keep in that list is uh, project support material. So this could be all mm. the relevant data that you might want to pick up and have a look at when you when you want to think about the project. So you might have a, a project plan. You might have some. Uh, I had a lawyer in in the last seminar, so she had some case files, materials that she needed to review. Mm. Things like that. Things that you need to to bring up and have a look at. Um, that that's what you then have as support material. So we don't want to mix that in there. We want to keep a nice clean projects list because that's so valuable so nice to get an mm. overview run through that list um and also make sure that that each of them has a has a next action somewhere in your system yeah yeah and then when you say a flat list i just want to elaborate on that because um, you know when you say flat list some people go huh what is that and mm. I, uh, imagine <laughs> you just have a piece of paper and you 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 yeah. you or you have two pieces of paper one for you know work project and one for personal project and just write them down on the list yeah. and this can then be transferred or just use a note in a notes app um, it could be as simple as that um, where you record your desired outcome yeah. and f forgive people um, you know that there is we use verbs to in both next actions but also in desired outcomes to show ourselves when it's finished so if you're going to use a verb for your I'm sure you've uh, you know just emphasize on that what's the verb for the uh, the summer house finalize finalized okay so we we, we would say that um that the the verbs you will use in um in uh, a project is a little different because it's 
it's kind of like milestone more when something is finished. So it could be finalized, could be finished, could be what? Yeah, publish, uh, complete, um, have approved, and things yeah. like that. Reviewed something, uh, something that's like kind of like a longer process works. But now, now that we have recorded that personal project on the personal project lists, um, paint on you know paint painting the summer house finalized or something like that. Um, some people actually then like to add a personal flair. They like to add, a, a, especially if you, you are not attracted to a project. And there are two things you can add to make it a little more attractive. And some people, myself included, when I, especially when I am not attracted to something, a little emoji go a long way. So kind of like a <laughs> smiley face or, you know, a happy smiley, you know, something like this. Or, um, or even paint a picture of what it would be for me when this is finished. And uh, for instance, we are... Um, uh, sitting on the uh, sitting on the, we sit on the veranda outside the summer house watching the the sun go down with a glass of wine and remember how good life is <laughs> if you if you have that as a picture maybe it's it's um it's a more attractive picture than you know the the work of painting the summer house mm, yeah i don't know i would um, no, but I have a coaching client who does that uh, for, for, I think, pretty much all his projects, that he will have a, mm -hmm. a project title that defines the, the desired outcome, but he does add some kind of wording, some kind of description on, uh, you know, to elaborate to himself when, primarily, I think, when he does his weekly review and he walks through each of the projects, there will be, uh, in his uh, setup, there will be a small small note for each of the projects that he can mm -hmm. then look at, and you know there will be a description somewhat similar to what you just described. And that mm -hmm. for him, that's that's really helpful. Mm -hmm. And getting things done is it's it's a lot about finding out what works for you. So we give you the kind of the guidelines and the the framework for for that the methodology gives you, the structure you need. And um, it helps you then to use this structure uh, and then adapt it to how you, your brain works. So if you're attracted to emojis, you, you know, if you need a, a photo where you f Photoshop your, the, the finished painting onto the house, uh, <laughs> it, whatever works for you. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's no, and that a, continues mm -hmm. to amaze me. You know, th small things again. A lot of things mm -hmm. in GCD are really small things, and they have big impact in the yeah. right strategic places. And and yeah. this is one of the you know emojis can be one thing. I, mm -hmm. I I tend to use it more when I want to get an overview of things like like areas of focus that I want to to um, see as part of a project list for example I, mm. I help myself with with emojis um, I had a coaching client as well a while back who was really it was so important for him that we used different colors so he had multiple businesses that he was running mm. uh, so to get that clear overview where does this project belong to um we had to go in there we had emojis we had colors uh, different ways to set it up just to signal mm. easily to him that he knew exactly what this was about mm. so those kinds of things you know come to be honest coming from the as an engineer coming from that kind of background i would just think i need just need a plain list you know text <laughs> black on white yeah. uh, but but this really does matter uh, yeah. to more more to some people than to others but but certainly you know mm. try it out play with it just like you yeah. said play experiment that's i think yeah, that's the exactly. key word so okay so now we have um, you know kind of shown you hopefully hopefully what a desired outcome is or a project and then to move that project forward we need uh, next actions and can you help me define a next action to refresh that yeah. again so that's the what you just mentioned with regards to the next physical visible action that that we might see you take to move this thing one step closer to what your desired outcome is. Mm -hmm. So so coming back to your verb example from before, this will be more direct verbs describing a physical action, meaning call, write, um, you know, go to the hardware store, things like that, mm -hmm. um, and 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 um, and then define the, the the actual next action. So in my to so stick with the painting the summer house, and now I really have to make sure that we get that done soon because I'm sure people will be asking <laughs> me about it. Um, the next action for that is is simply that we just want to want to check check the status on the walls. I think when we get there, just mm -hmm. to make sure that when there's no more preparation work, that we can just go ahead and and paint it. Mm -hmm. um, and that leads to the next step in then deciding okay so where does the next action go and like you were hinting at before Morton, we might have a another piece of paper just to capture these uh, these next actions but 
um, in this case, I know exactly when this has to be done. And that's when the calendar comes into play. So mm. this is booked on the calendar for Sunday when we, mm. uh, when we get to go to the, uh, mm. the summer house. Mm. So, so, but if it, if it didn't go to the calendar, it will ha it will go on the next actions list. So we use yeah. calendar as a way to prioritize, uh, to do stuff, uh, set aside time to, to do things that you just need to get done. And, um, but if it does, if it's not urgent or super important, uh, it could go on um, next actions lists, and we would then describe, as you said, Loris, the the, uh, the the next action, physical, visible, and I also um, for help people to understand. And this could be a qualifier for you. Do I have a, um, a next action? Is can somebody see me do this? Can I obs can some person observe me do this? That helped me a lot when I learned GTD back in the day. And the second question I would ask is, uh, can I do it in one sitting? If it's not done in one sitting, maybe you should just say, try to uh, chop it up even more into more physical, visible next actions. And then the third qualify, do I have everything I need? And a lot of people then mm -hmm. go there and they understand that the, the first next action they are supposed to do is not what they think it is like. Change car tires is one of my favorite. Um, uh, change to winter tires, and you end up understanding that actually you might, maybe you need to buy new winter tires. And then how do I understand this? Well, I need to understand what's the depth of the, the um, my tire grip. And then uh, how do I find this? Well, I need to buy a you know one of these measure uh, thingies that I need to do this. And then where do I get that? Well, I go to a hardware store. Okay, so you have an errand to go to the hardware store and buy one of these thingies to measure the depth of your of your the, the grip of your tires. And that's the next action. And if you don't have that qualifier, do I need? Do I have everything I need? Um, maybe you should have that qualifier first. I don't know. Does that make sense to you, Lois? Absolutely. No, and it's a, it's a very Norwegian example to go and measure. Yeah, exactly. No winter tires. Uh, no, I love it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, um, but, but you're reminding me of an example just from the seminar last week. I had mm. a, a, a very smart guy um, from the banking world, um, and he was starting to build his list, and we were talking about this exact topic of, you know, so how how can we really make this clear what's the next action do you have all the things you need uh, and is it broken down into the right level uh, and and he had a good example of uh, that he needed to, um, so he was into business intelligence and other things and and he needed to to actually write some code as well mm. so that was what he had on his next action write code to do blah 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 um and then we spoke about that and i challenged him a bit and said okay so well could you do this right now could you sit down and do this and um yeah that was sort of the his starting point that you could probably do this it, it would probably take like you know four or five hours to really get this this one done so okay well that that sounds a bit heavy what what would i see you do and we were talking a bit back and forth and he might find an old piece of code because he knew he'd done they'd done something similar before so he was working on that and we spoke about this a bit later in the seminar and he had actually changed it to an uh, agenda item because now that he was thinking through, he actually might have a colleague who had already done this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so exactly. so yeah. it could be the case that we had just saved him or he had mm. saved himself from, from four or five hours of work. But mm. it really is, you know, really thinking that thing through. And that can perhaps be a, uh, the, the exercise of the day for, for people mm. listening is to just, you know, keep this perspective in mind when you walk mm. through your next actions list in your next weekly review, for example. Yeah. One of the things that I, I, I mentioned to people when I when we, when I talk about next actions is that if you don't clarify your next actions that are real next actions like um, you will procrastinate that maybe yeah. because your brain knows very well that you've not clarified this well and it will it, it will give you resistance doing that next action and that, that might be a, a trigger for you next time you look through your lists. Um, not be clear of you or just look to your you know, next actions list and and um, ask yourself do i feel comfortable starting moving on this and if you feel like nah, i no i don't like this <laughs> then ask yourself why why do i have a resistance on this and i'm pretty sure that some of you will you know realize that i've not thought this true you don't have mm. the first visible next action and uh, which you can do in one setting and that where you have everything you need 
So it, especially the latter might be, you know, I don't have that email address. That's why I don't feel comfortable trying to write an email because my brain is giving me resistance on this. So I don't know. Mm. I hope that makes sense to people. Mm. Yeah. So I think, uh, yeah, thanks to thanks to Oliver for the question. Uh, short yeah. and uh, precise, but um, a very interesting topic to always uh, to always dive into. Mm -hmm. Should we head on to the next one? Martin? I think that is a good idea. Just right. read the question, please. <laughs> so this one is from Hugh. He says, hi, Lars. Hi, Morten. Started listening to your podcast as I want to start using GTD, but I'm finding it very difficult to find the time to do so. I would be very interested in hearing a podcast on your thoughts on how to get started with GTD if you're someone who isn't able to set aside a significant block of time in order to get the initial projects list, next actions list, filing system organized, and who is instead going to have to set up slash start using GTD in a piecemeal fashion. And then he provides several examples of some big projects going on in his life, some uh, good examples of, of, of areas of focus as well. Um, mm. And then he, he goes on to say, it can feel a bit overwhelming and I feel like GTD could be an enormous help, but I'm currently in a bit of a catch 22 situation. I need to, I need GTD to help deal with all the things I have to do, but I have so many things to do. I struggle to find time to use GTD. Mm. I'm sure there are people, plenty of people in my situation who would benefit from GTD, but who only have time to set it up incrementally. And I think a podcast episode on this subject could be really useful. Thanks again for making such a helpful and engaging podcast. Kind regards from Hugh. Okay. Thank you, Hugh, for your good question. And um, unfortunately, you're not alone. So I, I'm sure a lot of people listening to this podcast are using us kind of like, a, I'm, I'm sorry, but you, maybe you use us as a, as, a, as a kind of fancy way to procrastinate learning GTD. <laughs> you're kind of like, I listen to this. I don't, I am not doing GTD, but I'm sure I'm productive now. So, I'm, I'm, of course, this is a bit, you know, jokeful, but it's still. Um, and, and we talked about using analogies before, you know, in the pre-show here. And I've I've been um, a little culturally insensitive to some people before. So I've, <laughs> we've, we've, I've reframed my, my analogy to kind of g give you all um, um, an idea of uh, a little bit of the absurdity in uh, what, because uh, as Hugh says, a lot of you, I'm sure, want to learn GTD, but you don't have the time, and that is just to you know you really you, you realize that your boat is sinking, it's leaking water, but you do not have time, or you don't think you have time to take it to the dry dock. And I'm just saying that when you're instead of then um, using a lot of time and energy trying to, to you know to to uh, you know using a bucket in here and you're trying to empty the boats of water, which is a lot of what the extra work you you're doing. Instead of that, take it to the dry dock, learn GTD, patch the hole, and get started. And i I've you know in so many coachings I've you know people are saying the same thing I don't have time I don't have time to find you know but at the same time they understand that they need this so let me talk about just one minute this what I call the this the the, the strategic planner thinker and your the the little little bit more emotional worker who will do things and um, if you use what we call the amygdala, which is the the part of the brain who's in the brainstem back in your, you know, in back inside your, your brain is full of your emotions. This this is where all your emotions go, and that emotions can be happiness, it can be also anxiety and panic. And I think that the two latter is a lot of people feel that I have panic. If I take time to learn GTD, a lot of people will be angry with me because I can't deliver on my work. But remember that that is if you use your common sense and your strategic thinker thinking ahead, I'm sure that you will understand that. And that's by the way, the frontal cortex, he lives here, the strategic or she lives here, your strategic thinker. And, um, and if you use the commonsensical strategic thinker saying that, well, and I will ask you a couple of questions now, which is interesting. What would the future you be happy for you make today? So mm. if you're the future you, when you are, uh, you know, a little older, a little wiser, what would would with the, the that person be happy if you learn GTD today? 
today, not tomorrow, but today. Mm. You start learning today. You start, you know, uh, we will talk a little bit about how you can get that. But I just want to give you uh, some arguments for why. Why is this? Why is this? Um, important to you what what if you start focusing on what would my life look like if I did this what would change in my life and we see again and again that people saying that I'm more happy with getting things done I feel more overview and more control I'm doing more of the right things and that's uh, you know I get get to go home on time I don't work as much overtime um, uh, I spend more time with my family, my loved ones, and that's valuable to me. So, what's valuable to you? Hmm. What's you? What's valuable to you? If you want to burn yourself out, uh, please continue. <laughs> but if you want to have a strategy for, you know, get more of the right stuff down, uh, done. Um, and get yourself into a place where you are in control of all your commitments. And um, I think getting things done, learning, getting things done will be very good for you. So that was a long rant, but okay. Lars, what's your take on this? <laughs> yeah, no, so I, but it, it really is an interesting topic. And it, it is interesting always to hear from people because it, you know, when they come across this challenge that uh, I don't have time to become more productive. <laughs> and it just it, it it I see this relatively frequently, uh, especially when people are. I had a, a talk. It's been a while now. It was maybe a year ago, and I spoke to a, a possible coaching client about coaching, and it was clear that he had sort of been recommended to talk to us, and it just wasn't you know uh, any priority for him to become more productive. It was just he was you know. He did not see the need to become more productive. And, and clearly, Hugh is in a sort of a different place because it, he does see the need for it, but mm. the, struggling to find find the time and starting in, in sort of a, I think, a piecemeal fashion was the way that he, he mm. described it. Um, so if we were to take that approach, then, you know, where, where to start? And, mm -hmm. um, and I think one of the, um, one of the interesting things that we have in the, the seminar now, uh, was, uh, was, um, these new videos created with, with David Allen, the author of getting things done in the reinforcement program that you attend as part of a, a seminar. And, um, there are these, uh, videos on, on the five limiting mindsets that continue to hold you back from from parts of gtd and one of them is is that you 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 don't get started you just want to have something in order before you get started mm. and then there are so perfect. many reasons <laughs> yeah exactly let me fix this first and then I have I'll to have the perfect tool <laughs> yeah <laughs> so 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 really the, you know the, the advice would be to just get started start somewhere mm. Start yeah. by, I think David says, cleaning a drawer, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like pick up anywhere that you can feel like you can, can yeah. pick up. Um, the right place to start is really something that, that you know once you have an overview of GTD and, mm. and you can get that overview from the book or from the seminars or mm. wherever you get a complete overview of GTD and then figure out right where's the right place to start for you. It's, it's, mm. it's impossible for us to point to say, you know, start with, with that, mm. um, especially oh. when, you have, when you have such a leech, such a mm. picture life that you, yeah. um, that you describe you. Yeah, I'm just well. I have a comment, and uh, but if you look at the difference between how we, you know, at least I do um, describe, you know, the, uh, getting things done is a productivity methodology. So um, you know, just doing things uh, very effective is good. You are you are you know you're efficient. You move fast. You remove friction, but you're not, you don't know if it, it, they are the most correct things to do. Getting things done helps you with that, and that moves you. When you do the right things, you get productive. So that you're, if you define um, getting things done as that, is you're doing the right things uh, the most effective way. So, mm. so maybe now you are doing things you should not do. Um, a lot of people understand that with getting things done, that there is always more to do than there is time. I come, mm. always come back to this. It's kind of like a mantra for me. Uh, if you are focusing on that, there is always more to do than there is time. You will also understand that, well, I have to prioritize. And then you get back to values. What's valuable for the company I work for? What's valuable for me personally? And, and, and just use your what's, what's valuable for me as a way to, you know, to, to choice or to choose the things you need to get done. Mm. And, um, 
But I have a, a, a suggestion for where you should start, which will kind of force you into getting things done if you feel a little resistance. So just start with step number one. Just capture everything that has your attention. And if you do this, you will feel a relief. You want to go back there. You want to start emptying your head and on a regular basis. But if you then don't clarify and organize, they will move back in. And if you don't clarify them well, they will go back into your brain. If you don't organize them well, your brain will not trust that system. And it will not trust that you capture them at a good place. And it will move back in in your brain. So, so you know, start with capture. And then start clarifying and organize them into a system. And then look at them at a regular basis for make sure they don't come back, um, back into your brain again. And if you do that and then engage on a regular basis with the most important things that your brain can relax that while well, you are doing the most important things now, then you are in the zone of getting things done, stress-free productivity. But if you start capturing, that's where it all starts. Just grab a piece of paper or a, you know, a digital tool of sorts and then just one place and then start filling that place with whatever shows up in your brain you might want to do something about. Yeah. Start and I, nice and easy. <laughs> yeah, make it easy and make it easy. Yeah. just just capture things. It's going to help you. And um, and some people never get past capture, but I then just fill that list and then tick things off the, the what mm. I call the I call that a panic list. If you don't, because they're like oh, what's on top of my panic list today? I am most what what, what am I? My anxiety today drives me to do. Instead of saying what uh, what is most important for me to get done today, instead of your anxiety level, what comes in and shouts the loudest is often not the most important thing. Mm. So, yeah. yeah, and the only way you can find what's important is that you have to record it, you have to write it down and reflect on it on a regular basis. Now, that's getting things done. Yeah. In a nutshell. And with regards to the timing aspect, maybe to, because I'm reminded about a coaching client that I actually was just in, in contact with. So someone that I, I worked I, I worked with her recently. And one of the first places we started was that she was really, you know, she had a completely booked calendar, uh, several hundred emails per day, really struggling to find time for this, but but mm. knew that GCD would provide value. And in the end, it also turned out to be, to be the case really for her. Um, one of the first places we started was to find time in her calendar. So if mm. if this, I don't know, I haven't seen Hugh's calendar. I don't know if this is, is a problem, but but start to book time. Start to block time so that your calendar isn't just, you know, grabbed by everyone around you. And as soon as mm. there is a free, free slot, then they will grab that time. Start to set mm. aside time. Block some time for yourself. Start with the steps that Morton described. Maybe block some time as well for the weekly review. Start to prioritize this over all of the other mm. things going on. If you yeah. want to get started, that that could be yeah. a, a place to start without yeah. having the full overview of where you are right now. Yeah, I do agree. And the the, the idea of you um, just capture everything that has your attention first, and then you know um, try and define them as as we answer the first question um, with desired outcomes and next actions. Just get started, and it doesn't have to be perfect. But it, no. but you have to get started. This if you don't start, you will never move anything forward. So yeah, yeah. Okay, I saw we... that in the seminar last week as well. One person was saying, "I want to make sure that I make the right projects list from the start." So I want to. Um, I have these projects over here. I have some over there. How mm. do I do it? Just get started. Get yeah. started, and then we will we'll reorganize as we go along. Yeah, and getting things done, uh, you you can't make it perfect because there is no perfect. But it's just iterations, a little better every day. The direction towards GGD mastery is more important than, you know, doing it perfect. So, yeah. Okay, signing off with those words, I think we are at the end of this. Yeah. I don't know if you agree with me. It sounds like you are. So will you take us out as always, <laughs> Lars? No, I think that was a good one to, to, to wrap up the episode on. And as mm. always, we end the episodes by mentioning uh, a reminder for you to go on over to gtdnordic.com have a look around because on there you will find links to each of the country websites for each of the Nordic countries and when you click on those links you will find the, the local sites and you can find articles about GCD, links to the newsletters, links to groups on social media where natives discuss the, the methodology and tools and of course you can find all of the offerings that we 
uh, provide speeches, coaching, seminars, both physical and virtual. If you're outside of the Nordics, head on over to gettingthingsdone.com to find your local partners. And last thing, as always, we really hope that you find these episodes value both Oliver and Hugh, but also everyone else listening out there. If you have any questions, be sure to send us an email, podcast.utdnordic.dk. Mm-hmm. You can find that in the uh, notes of the uh, podcast. Um, and if you appreciate the podcast, we really, uh, uh, you know, we're happy if you share it with a colleague who might benefit from this or give us a rating on the, the platform that you use on iTunes or whatever yeah. you might be using. It really helps uh, the discoverability of the podcast. So thanks to those of you who have already done so. Thank you, Lars. And uh, dear listeners, until next time, stay safe and stay productive. Bye bye. Bye, everyone. Okay. Mm. Uh, um, Ska jag bara se the first question för det så yeah. kan vi yeah. väl vara den där. Ja. Yeah.